What's up, everybody, and welcome into the Backliners Podcast, Agro and Barracuda, as per usual. But we have per something usual. new this week. It's a new sponsor. Welcome to the Backliners, presented by Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app and use code Backliners for a deposit match up to one hundred dollars. You'll be hearing some more about Prize Picks later on in the episode, but we're happy to have them along. Uh, Barra, we're going to be talking today Hello. about the eleven point three uh, patch notes. Um, mm-hmm. It gets a little crazy out here. Uh, let me tell you that right now. Barra has not seen these patch notes, and I'm I'm actually pretty me, happy about that. Do you want me to look at them on the website, or do you want me to wait? Yeah, but, but don't you, read like... ahead. But don't read ahead, because they're like okay, it'll be well, easier. If, like I'm gonna okay, start. I'm just, I, I've got. Yeah, Chiron I'm not gonna look at, the at them then. Yeah, I'm not gonna look at them because if I if I read one, I'll be tempted to like keep reading. So okay. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll just let you do it the whole thing. Time. Fair enough. Uh, just hard carrying as per usual, guys. I mean, here we go. It's like, oh, as man. men later should. Yeah, it's like, oh, hey, Scream, do you want to carry this game? Okay, here you go. We'll pick your gut last. Like, it's the exact same thing as we're all used to, you know? Um, no, a lot of gods got some pretty heavy quality of life adjustments, um, and there were a lot of timing changes. So, um, just a lot more abilities and base attacks will better match their animation um, without getting too much into the, the weeds of how this happened, uh, mostly because I don't know exactly what Lurmy and hello? Chaos said. Um, hello? Did you lose me? I don't think I lost... I didn't lose myself, so maybe... Do we have to do the phone call podcast again? That was a classic. Bear is... Very uh, scared I'm smile. Back. I'm He's back. back. I'm back. Oh, he is so Luna- <laughs> I got so confused. Luna muted my sound on my keyboard, <laughs> and I'm like, hello? What is going on? <laughs> no, you're good. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know exactly what Chaos and Lermy went into on the Passion Show. show. Um, I wasn't able to watch, but uh, basically, we found a lot of areas of improvement for bait attacks and projectiles in general feeling a lot more smooth. And coming mm-hmm. out a lot more cleanly. And I think if you are someone who has played a ton of Smite every day for years, and then you log in and play a god that you're used to who got some of these changes, you will feel it. Um, if you, you know, if on, on gods you don't play a lot, you might not feel it as much because it is small. But for for the really hardcore Smite players, I think it will feel really, really good. Which is, uh, which is really exciting because, you know, that's me. Um, but let's start with Chiron. Uh, Chiron may now fire masterful, sh- masterful shot while charging in Gidea. Barra? Thoughts? He can fire his two while he's dashing. That is crazy. <laughs> that is... Are you being... I can't you... tell if you're being sincere or not. Wait, that that is actually crazy. If you dash on someone and you, you're slow procs earlier, I feel like that's just so much better. Yeah, and you get the increased scaling because you have increased power during Gidea. Exactly. And you're like auto dash two auto auto kickback like is gonna is gonna slam. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people's muscle memory just won't be firing the two because you're so used to it. It'll be like stopping Shablonk or like stopping or stutter stepping on Shablonk. You're just gonna be so used to it, you just won't fire your two. Yep. Unless it happens to you several times, and you're like, oh yeah, I can fire that ability. That's pretty crazy. That's Whoa. it's something. Oh, sorry, you just probably heard a noise from me searching for something. That's uh, probably a change that should have happened a long time ago. Yep. Um, just to make him, I, I mean, it probably helps his mid lane too, but that definitely helps his boxing a lot in, in ADC. Um, you're gonna be saying just, that a lot that this should have happened way earlier. Um, <laughs> and it's because you know, it it these things take some amount of additional support from other teams and i think this year it's very clear that that's where we are putting more resources into changes like this um Mm -hmm. and that's really exciting for us on the design end and uh it seems like the players really excited too a lot of really good reception for this patch which was uh really really great to see um next up heimdall uh reduced the time that i'm skipping a bunch by the way but i'm just going through the the cooler ones uh, Heimdall reduced the time that Heimdall is locked out of performing any action on missing this ability on his ultimate, act, allowing oh. him to act sooner. He had a crazy long post fire yeah. on missing the alt, um, and we have reduced that amount of time. Uh, does it say what amount of time? 
Was it? Uh, it was before no. versus now? Okay. No, it does um, not say what it was before versus now. But it was significant before, and it is significantly less than before now. Because it was awful before. It was crazy. Like it, if you tried to, like, gap close with that thing, you were just ulting, and then you were just, like, sidestepping. And then I stand. To, like, yeah, like, watch me T-pose after I ult, and then yes. I'll just... I'll just watch you for a little bit. Yeah, that was one of the worst feeling things when up in if you're in a boxing fight. Yeah. Um, if you ult and just miss, and you're just like, I'm about to take 400 to 600 damage for just missing my ability. Um, does that also help them if they beads it? Um, I don't know because that's a different outro animation. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that one has been adjusted. I don't think so based on this wording. Okay. I mean, I assume that's fine, because at least you're getting beads, like the CC immunity for the trade. Yeah. Um, yeah, that... I think that ability is probably going to feel good for everyone, but especially for, like, bad Heim players, like me. Yep. Uh, if you miss that ability often, you're just being able to auto-attack again, so you're not just losing out on so much DPS. Yep. It's definitely going to feel really good. Uh, Charon, we, we heard a lot of talk about these stacking mechanics and how they feel really cool but it feels bad when you like just cap them and then that's kind of it so now the cap on his passive is up from 350 to 998 which is as close as we can get to the cap or like as close as uncapped as you can get you will not hit 998 in a game you won't do it um i believe because you still have a max amount that you can carry you have to go back to base like all that kind of stuff but you get a lot more health uh with caron which is uh which is fun um what is his passive again it's been a while minions die they drop the caron's coins you yeah. pick up the caron's coins when you go back to base you trade those coins in for permanent hp how soon were people hitting the 350 oh, uh yeah. they weren't really, really hitting. like oh, you okay. you would have to like get to the you know that's like a 30 minute game at least i think gotcha, if i remember okay. um yeah. so it's really more of a for fun like go wild if you can it's a long game you know type yeah of for the people that were losing the mini game now you get it literally forever <laughs> forever uh sobek may now pass through player made walls in his ultimate he's under no. the water you no. know he's under no. the, he's under the water no. he's lurking That's... in the water some would say <laughs> that is i don't like that change <laughs> <That's> <laughs> fair enough, enough. um that is not a good change oh here you go That's scotty scary. Uh, first of all, her basic attacks are one that got the firing timing adjusted. Uh, I'm sure you would mm -hmm. feel the difference if you went back and, and tried it out. For sure, yeah. Uh, um, Caldier can now take five instances of damage from any minion source before losing health. Uh, this does not include jungle bosses. But basically, previously, Caldier would just get one-tapped by jungle camps because they did yep. increase damage to him. Now, uh, he needs to take five instances of damage from any minion source before losing hp so he needs to get hit five times by a jungle camp one one of the creeps there in order to lose one hp so he effectively has 25 hit points and each minion does one yes uh that's, i think that's... scotty jungle is so back <laughs> so it was never here it was never so here. back <laughs> Maybe only for Sino was it here. But yep. that, that god felt so bad on this map, just because you, your dog would just die to jungle all the time. Yeah. Unless you were finding, like, enemy jungle, because it was different AI. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that change is really nice, because your dog would just... You'll, ha you'll just have a more effective dog throughout the entire game. He's a good boy. Um, probably more early mid-game focus than late-game focus, because late-game, you're, you're just one-shotting the buffs anyways. Yep. Um, yeah, that's, that's a really good change. Uh, Cupid now gains two stacks of his passive when basic attacking enemy gods instead of one. So you get to stack that up a little bit faster. Ooh. Um, Jing Wei, buckle in, Barry. Oh, no. Here we go. Oh, no. Don't say, oh, no. Fatalis? Persistent Gust. That's her one. This ability now knocks Jing Wei up less than enemy gods. It's not as high of a knockup. Wow. Um, you want to get knocked up by it because you get your power. If you dash, you know, you, you get your longer dash, all that kind of good stuff. But it doesn't need to knock you up as high as it does to enemy gods. Uh, enemy gods knock up has, is unchanged. It's just a much lower knock up for her now. Do you keep the same trajectory airtime? Like, sometimes you're, like, trying to max range, like, go around a wall. 
and then dash like at the very bottom. Mm. So can you still do that or no? Will you probably hit the ground sooner? I'm not a dirty Jingwei main like you, um, so I can't say for sure. <laughs> uh, but I'm not sure. You'll have to hop on and test it out for yourself and let me know. If, sincerely, let me know if you did lose something there because we can probably do our best to get it back. Uh, well, I don't know if I want that god more in the meta ever. Uh, what meta, fun? Barra? What meta? <laughs> every meta uh, it's just everyone it's 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 the wild west right now in smite which is really kind of sick oh, when you think about it like yeah true you can just kind of do whatever you want and i think that's really awesome yeah no one's forcing the meta no one's making the meta it's just like what feels good in ranked right now what's winning the rank games and jingwei not the best rank god but sometimes very good um, i was watching vin play some zong kui today on my lunch break and that was ooh, fun little zonger donger um Bastet, you may now cancel Pounce while it is active to put it on cooldown. So, you know, you get the movement speed and you can jump back, but when you're just clearing your camps, it's already a fairly long cooldown. That buff lasts mm -hmm. for a long time. It, may, it means that one of your primary clear abilities is on an excessively long cooldown. So now you can choose to just automatically cancel it to put it on a cooldown earlier. Um, not a huge deal for her, but a nice little, again, quality of life type of change. Mm -hmm. um freya her oh, no. irradiate a01 uh freya may now cancel this ability while it is active to put it on cooldown um so if you run out if you if you need the slow you know you you're pulsing you irradiate uh oh i need the slow i don't want that extra damage you can right click oh. puts it on cooldown like if you only need it for a few autos to clear a camp put it on cooldown a little bit earlier don't have to wait wait it out uh it also got a three second cooldown reduction um, what? It is now an eight second cooldown. Uh, I, for one, welcome our Freya Overlord. Um, Freya time, no. baby. Freya time. No. Freya time is the worst time. Freya time is worse than Jingwei time. That is a take. Um, Hunbats. <laughs> this is a change I've wanted since day <laughs> one of playing Smite. Not really, because Hunbats was Sun Wukong when I started playing Smite. Um, at least I think he was, or maybe I just watched some videos from MLC Stealth and Boo Man 61. Um, the way the monkey bounce works historically is you press it to teleport to the target you hit last, not the target you hit next, which has never made any sense to me whatsoever. I've hated the way that's felt forever. Now I'm happy to report you, when you try to teleport with the sacred monkey toss, it will teleport you to the next target it is going to hit. So you can get there with your monkey. Uh, it still does the damage. Um, it's just so much more. Now. I feel like everyone who reads this ability thinks that's how it works. And then you have to like learn how it was working. Um, yeah. This makes a million times more sense to me. Uh, I do feel bad for the Hunbats mains that have had 10 years of muscle memory doing this one way. But... That way was weird, in my opinion. The wrong way. <laughs> yeah, it was, in my opinion, not great. Um, so I'm, I was so very excited about this. So you can just queue it up to tag along to the first person you hit? Yep. Because that was something I could do, like, 50% of the time, maybe. I would just struggle with that. For yep. some reason, very often. Like, even, I feel like even if I'm spamming three, it just won't do it sometimes. Yep. And that, that sounds... A lot nicer. Yeah, as you said, probably the jungle mains are going to feel a little off for a while, but I did better. sample some known Hunbats players when we were talking about making this change, and I was like, hey, as people who have put probably the most hours into Hunbats, uh, would this make you mad? And they were all like, no, why didn't it work that way from the beginning? And I said, I agree. <laughs> uh, so that's why we were happy with it. Um, you hit up Glavis in the DMs. I did not. Uh, Artemis! Oh. <laughs> Uh, part of this, um, one of the most underrated changes, I think, in the patch. And, Barra, this is your sign. It was, it's a soft ranked reset on this patch. This Artemis mm -hmm. change, you are going to be a 3,500 MMR gamer again very soon. Uh, Transgressor's Fate, that's the one, may now spawn traps slightly faster. So, basically, oh. your traps open up a little bit more quickly. As the best Artemis trapper, as you self-crowned yourself, uh... 
It's not a self crown. It's a crown that I have received from years and years of expert trappery. Right, but who is the one who said Barracuda is the best Artemis trapper? I can't remember their name. It's just been. <laughs> I so think many it was John Salter, years. maybe. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, uh, I think it might have been him. That, that name sounds a little familiar, but I think it was someone else. I think it was a lot of other people now. Um, just over the years, you know, you just, you get so good at something, you just get so many compliments all the time. You just get recognized, right. Yeah. Nothing you can do about it, that. I'm walking around the streets, people are like, is, is that him? <laughs> is that the best Artemis Trapper? And you're like, <laughs> who, me? Um, <laughs> That's me. Okay, before we get to the major god changes, I do want to call out one more. Kernanos, uh, he just got firing timing anim- uh, adjustments on his base attacks and on his two, but I think they are maybe the most noticeable on him um in this patch so definitely try them out um if you're a current player i think your basics will feel way more responsive and your two will feel way more responsive um which is very good yeah the two felt so slow sometimes yep um all right let's do let's do one of one or two of the major god changes where we talk about prize picks a little bit wait uh, one second my headset's dying oh no his headset is dying look at him go He's plugging it in. He's going the distance. He's going for speed. We're back. And he's back. Look at that. Um, was that a battery change that I just saw? Is that yep. <laughs> wow, that thing uses batteries? That's crazy. Um, it's wireless. What do you mean? Well, I don't know. I just feel like most wireless headsets like charge, you know, like with like a cord. Yeah, with batteries. <laughs> with batteries, right. Um, ESET. Wing Gust. This ability animates and fires approximately 25% faster. Uh, And the projectile speed of this ability is increased by approximately 5%. As a former ESET main, uh, back when I was a player, we basically only played heavy CC comps in mid unless I was playing Giannis or Zeus. Um, And we played a ton of ESET Thor. I love ESET. Wing Gust has always, always, always been one of the worst abilities in the entire game. Um, 100%, yeah. Just nearly worthless. Uh, in Feels terms, so bad to use. Yeah, does not feel great. Clears the wave, great. Um, does that. <laughs> Outside of that, not a whole lot. Um, so this ability now, like, I would probably max this. Her damage comes out fast. Like, it is, because we've had to buff the damage so many times over the years to make it not feel like complete garbage and now it feels Mm -hmm. like you can actually channel half or all of it um and get significant damage i am gonna definitely be playing some eset mid um this does help her mid significantly more than her support uh i would have said that her support or jungle were both better than her mid lane for the last four years probably um Mm -hmm. but now i i think this is a an exclusively mid lane buff for a god that has been out of the mid lane meta for a long time, and I'm really excited to play with it. Yeah, that ability has always felt so bad. There's like this weird mid game point where you just feel like you can't ever use that button again. Yep. Or you like cast it like one or two times and cancel it to use a relic or something. Well, yep. I guess you don't have to anymore. It's been a while since I played ESET, but um, yeah, that ability has always felt so slow. And. It's kind of funny because when you're playing against an ESET and it's like late in the team fight and she's able to cast that whole one on you, you take like 1k. Yep. If it's any situation outside of that, that ability feels so bad. Well, you're going to be taking 1k a lot more often. Um, a lot faster. A lot faster. Uh, Terra. This one is very spicy. Force of Nature. That's her one. Uh, now Terra now has access to this ability from level one. Just like Bacchus huh? has chug from level one without appointment tara now has her dash from level one uh it does no damage unless she has a point in it and it has a 20 second cooldown unless she has a point in it but her whole kit is centered around this dash she kind of needs it in order to make the three a viable button whatsoever her levels one and two have always been incredibly weak uh because she doesn't have access to this dash now her levels one and two will be significantly better than they used to be. Uh, and she has it as just a mobility tool um, early on. This, in my opinion, is something that we probably could not do if SPL was a thing. No, no shot. Because her level one now is insane. Um, this would bring Ares into the meta <laughs> forever. Yeah, 
pretty much. Um, it's it's definitely a big deal for her, but it's not nearly as scary without me being able to watch uh, a Terra put up her two and then just basic attack people with her passive and then dash after them to keep basic attacking them if they like beads or whatever. Um, yeah, that's especially with like horrific war flag metas too. Like that sounds terrible to play against. Yes, she's very good late. Doesn't help her late. It ju- it really only matters levels one and two, which is of course a much bigger deal in higher level play than it is in most levels of play. Um, that's kind of funny because in higher level plays, it's not like her two. It's not like her level one and two were that bad in high level players, just because the Terra players were just so good. Right. That they could place an, like an effective two, get off like an effective amount of auto attacks, and then clap stun the you. two for a stun. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I think I, this uh, helps out sorry, every noob to medium player. I think this helps them out so much as Terra. Yep. Uh, I if you are unlucky enough to get into like a ranked game with PBM or genetics or something like that off the soft reset. And they're playing Terra. Uh, may God have mercy on your soul. Um, <laughs> Just beg for an Aries. Yeah, like, it's it could get ugly quickly. Uh, Terra, I think, going to be quite quite good. Um, yeah, okay, Cupid but, too. You know, sorry. True, true Cupid too. Uh, you know, Jing Wei. Uh, yeah. nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's all there is to it. Um, all right, before we keep going, I want to let you know about our new sponsor, Prize Picks. Uh, pri- what is Prize Picks? You might have thought that to yourself when I had the great intro earlier on. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They, we are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. That is unbelievably simple. Uh, I think a lot of like sports betting and that kind of stuff is so complicated. You know, the, the minus 500 plus 200, whatever. Miss me with all that. More than, less than, we can do that. In fact, I prepared some for you, Barry. Uh, you could you did? theoretically do something like this on prize picks. They aren't going to have this exact uh, bet, but... You know, maybe they will if uh, if everyone's really loving this. So, uh, Barrett, would you? I went into the office today. Mm-hmm. Um, would you say I had more than or less than three trips to the snack? Like, wall? oh, uh, what's on the snack wall? Uh, we got chips. We got some candy. We got some fruit snacks. We got some granola bars. Uh, we got some goldfish. Um. There's some, say, there's some good stuff. N- knowing you, it's probably more. Yeah, that's correct. I went to the to the snack wall five times that I can remember. Um, I have <laughs> that a sig- you can remember. I have a significant problem. Um, <laughs> it's it's really bad. Uh, all right, Barra. We also had a show match today, um, where in for Smite Two stuff. Did you do you think that I died more than or less than five times? What god were you playing, and what map? The Smite Two map, uh, and I oh, was just Conquest. Yeah, Conquest, uh, okay, and okay, I was playing, and I was playing Zeus. Uh, I would go more. <laughs> I think I died four times. No, I think I died four. So Barra's out. You were sweating. <laughs> we lost. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. we, we lost anyways. <laughs> we. Dude, we, pl- we did this last week. We got rolled. And I was like, okay, this week we're going to play better. Came in this week, still lost. Sag. But we did better this week. So, you know, we give me, give us one more week and we got it. Okay? That's all. Yeah, just have some more team talks. You know, get everyone together. Take them to the snack bar. Right. Exactly. Uh, so, th- l- I mean, look, it's so easy. Barra almost won uh, the, the daily fantasy sports of Agro's Workday. Uh, but you'll have better luck than Barrett did for sure. There's no doubt about mm-hmm. that. Uh, include, so it's not, of course, my work day, but it is things like football. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can t- turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. And you can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 
with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries on pri- today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Uh, you can also do things like mix and match. You know all the all the different prop bets that people like to do. Those are always really fun. Um, I know my friends uh, who are really into sports betting are huge fans of Prize Picks. Uh, use it all the time. They were going crazy when I was at my friend's bachelor party. They were like doing a lot of live betting and that kind of stuff, which is always really fun. Or like right up to the last moment before the game locks in, we were all talking about it. So that's a lot of fun. So all you got to do is download the app today and use code backliners for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, all you have to do, download the app today and use code backliners for a first deposit match up to $100. It's with prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Big shout out to prize picks for sponsoring the, uh, sponsoring the show. Um, all right. Cthulhu time. Oh no. It's okay. It's not when he's in his alt. Okay. Good. AO2, the Meyer, uh, Cthulhu no longer channels this ability, meaning the portal will grow and fire on its own. Um, his cast time individually has been reduced by approximately 75%. So, but previously Cthulhu had to raise up the arm and really squeeze the air in order to get these, these balls of mire in order to drop, right? Couldn't do anything else. You could right click at any point, but it would stop the channel of the ability. They wouldn't, it wouldn't continue to grow. It wouldn't drop. Now you can press two and then keep on doing your thing. You can press one. You can basic attack. You can, I don't know, three them into your coming route. Um, can you ult? You can ult. Yep. You can do whatever you want. Uh, it, yeah, your, I think the, your channel's over. I think the best thing would just be ulting and threeing. I don't know how many situations late game you're going to be able to one or auto attack uh yeah but i think late game it helps your initiation by a lot if you can two their tank put them in combat dash in um can do you have a window to blink if you cast two um yeah it's not damage no there's no the 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 pool doesn't do damage it's only the slam the like the ball so if you you can blink before the two balls come out i think so interesting yeah that would make his initiation really good yeah much better for sure, and we'll feel much mm-hmm. uh, much better for him. Um, Agni, you are no longer rooted during rain fire when you're when you're sending a bomb. Instead, you are slowed uh, for by fifty percent for the duration. So similar to what Hebo got, but Hebo was not slowed. I don't think um, is not slowed during that cast time. Agni still is. People kind of lost their minds about this on Twitter a little bit. Poor Chaos, like, got the full designer experience for his, like, first tweet about design stuff, which is which I felt bad about. <laughs> um, but it is it is not nearly as game-changing, I think, as it was for Hebo. For Hebo, it completely yeah. you know, revolutionized that character. It will feel better on Agni. You are not going to be able to actively juke a fast skill shot. Um you know, if they put a Poseidon Whirlpool underneath you uh, during this time, you will still get crippled. Um, you're not going to be able to just walk out. But any movement is better than no movement, right? Yeah, um, that's what I was going to say. So it is it is a difference maker. I think it helps you maybe like 10 to 20% of the time. But yep. if a person like is able to think, they're still going to hit you with the ability. Um, and I think... <laughs> I, I don't think it's that big, honestly. It like, is not it is not a huge deal to be honest. Dude, you should go look at Chaos's Twitter and see that tweet. Like he was getting crushed to the poor guy. Uh it just doesn't seem that crazy to me. It's not. It's really not. Y'all have a nice little gif, you can see it. Um It's a nice little Twitter video. Uh yeah. People, you know, had a lot of opinions on it. Um I think there were some lessons to be learned uh, from from that feedback, but I also think I'm interested in hearing what those people think once they play with and against it a little bit. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Are you watching it right yeah. now, Barry? I'm looking. This is this guy said. Let's give Agni more movement. <laughs> He's one of the easiest mages to kill. That dash is so interruptible. Like yeah. Barra, you have to remember, this is a lesson that I had to learn many times and still continue to need to learn. 
you are playing a different game than than the majority of the people who are going to be responding or commenting or posting. Like it's just, it's not even the same game. Wait, is Agnio P right now or something? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? No. He's not terrible. That's crazy. He's not bad. Oh, that's kind of like always Agni, right? Like, he's, yeah. he's not terrible. I mean, there's sometimes he's probably terrible in like cripple metas, but sure. I feel like he's always like, he's always okay. You yeah. Know? He's he's, fine. You can always pick him and be fine. Yeah. Like, this is not that big of a change. I felt like this the is... collective, like, Smite Twitter just woke up on the wrong side of the bed that day. Like,. They were just this in a seems bad like mood. bots, dude. Well, there are definitely some bot responses in there for sure. Uh, but... Oh no! <laughs> so what? <laughs> what? Yeah, you want to read that tweet? Please don't. Uh, that's we... not the right bot. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't. That's not what we want. Anyways, um, Zeus, uh, <laughs> chain lightning timing, uh, firing timing now better matches the animation. That'll feel really good. Uh, the two. Zeus may now refire this ability while it is active to recall it and put it on cooldown. Uh, you did this. One of the most requested changes for Zeus ever. <laughs> By um, myself. I, pers- I think longtime <laughs> listeners of the podcast will know that I am not a huge fan uh, of this ability in general. And I am a little concerned about the play pattern for Zeus that this will encourage. Um, but... The opinion of the community is more important, uh, and this is what they want, and so we're happy to do it. Um, More importantly, in my opinion, or at least the thing I'm more excited about, is that any enemies hit by the initial shield damage now also gain a charge. Uh, I don't know if you knew this, Barry, but when you throw your two and it lands, it does that pulse on landing. That did not apply a charge. It has never applied a charge. You have to basic attack it to apply a charge in that That's so funny, because I would have... I would have prize picked a lot of money on, uh, <laughs> on more than one charge or more than yeah. zero charges being applied. Yeah. We should have done that a whole is... prize picks themed episode. That would have been so much smarter. Damn. Yeah. If you did that for every single God, God that would have been so good. Oh. Missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. We're so, we're so washed, Barry. It's crazy. <laughs> we're so, I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a good defense. Um, yeah, Zeus <laughs> will feel much better. Uh, excited to see what people do with him. Um, mm-hmm. Odin. One of my biggest pet peeves in all of Smite is that his two, his shield, you know, it does damage based on how much shield health is left. Love that mechanic. Natural counterplay, very direct conveyance of how much damage you're going to take. Um, really, really cool, just general gameplay thought. Here's the part I hated. If it wasn't, if the shield was full HP, enemies would take, I think, 10% bonus damage from the shield explosion. Mm -hmm. If you got hit by one archer, one archer, one melee minion, anything to take that away from full HP shield, you lost 10% damage, which is huge, you know? Especially for a warrior who kind of like just kills you by the skin of their teeth a lot of the time. Losing that bonus damage drove me insane. It made a big difference. Like, if you were watching a pro player clear a wave as Odin, and then you tried to clear it, and they full cleared with the exact same items at the exact same time, (laughs) and you didn't, and you're like, what the heck is this? It's because of this, almost certainly. Um, Now, it no longer deals bonus damage if the shield is full. Instead, it always deals the bonus damage if it is active when he lands from his jump. So if you bird bomb the shield will do 10% bonus damage. It will still deal, it still deals its damage based on how much is left of the shield health. So, you know, it will, if you have a hundred shield left, it will deal 110 damage. Uh, But if you commit the jump, if you do the combo, you will get the bonus damage. Um, I think this is a much cleaner way of doing the bonus damage mechanic uh, that is not nearly as annoying. I think this is, like, two to three times more OP than the Agni change. Oh, for sure. It's not even close. Like, this is crazy. Well, this it are, is... like, Barra, if if you if an Odin was coming out of the jungle at you, right, and they 2 one yeah. they were already getting this, like, exactly as is, because they weren't yeah. going to be taking any damage. The only thing that Odin is losing that I, that I am a little sad about is the two out-of-combat 
and then blink in as it's about to explode and get your 10% bonus damage without having to commit your leap. Uh, That's the yeah. only thing I feel sad for Odin players that they are losing. That was cute. I think everything else about this change is a slam dunk, pun intended, because he's got the slam dunk skin. <laughs> um, over yeah. 10 dunks or bird bombs used per game, thanks to prize picks, with after this Odin change. Um, no I doubt. think this is also going to be really hard for muscle memory people that have been playing the game forever to get used to. Because there's so many Odin situations where you're always trying to dodge that piece of damage right before you two jump on somebody. Yep. And as a carry player, I think this should scare a lot of people whenever well, you see that Odin. Even even in this situation, like, you're still wanting to dodge as the Odin because it still would reduce your shield health, which still mm-hmm. reduces your damage, you know? But you're bur- yeah, you will like, take more from bird bombs. You will. Yeah, it's always that, like instance like the kind of like the blink instance where you can see a player's like setting it up yep it's the same with odin like you can see them like about to two one somebody and yeah this is this is a crazy change this is really strong and I mean, we're not if, done if i'll take the yeah, over it's not good it's fine i'll take the over on one change for odin um because there's two gungnir's might uh it used to do three pulses now it only does two pulses there is no more homing spear uh option Aww. now it is either a first pulse fire it you get attack speed and now as near you get attack speed second pulse stun you still get to hold the stun as you walk around all that kind of stuff um but and the damage has been adjusted so that each pulse is now more because you've lost a pulse but you get access to your stun a little bit sooner the lore tie-in for the homing pulse or for the homing spear was cool, but when you look at what was actually effective the most most of the time, that was almost never your option. And if it was your best option, like get better at aiming your skill shots, you know, like sorry, but you'd almost always rather have the stun. You'd almost always rather have the attack speed. Um, it makes his clear a lot better because you aren't losing as much by canceling for the attack speed, like. Losing that pulse out m- mattered a lot for the damage output on clearing like jungle camps, but you want, but the attack speed is so valuable for clearing the camps that it was like often worth it. Now it's way more worth it because each pulse is worth more. Um, I think this is just a really good general change outside of the loss of the lore tie in because he has a homing spear in the lore and now he doesn't have a homing spear. Yeah, I didn't even know he had a homing spear for a very long time. Um, until I saw a Reddit clip of a guy shooting someone under tower, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> it was like, right when he charged it, he like insta-released, and it was like a ROM or something that rolled away, and then it homed like really far and hit him, and I was like, oh. Like, oh yeah. Yep. That, that was that a, thing. a thing. Yep. It uh, was I thing. just, in pro play, you just never see anyone use it, ever. Yep. And, it, it, yeah, you just never saw it. Nope. Um, Arachne, uh, so we did a change not too long ago to Arachne where we made her stun only need two basic attacks. And that's because we were a little bit time constrained on resources from other departments in order to make it, make this change happen, which is the change that was a little bit more widely requested. Uh, Arachne no longer needs to hit consecutive basic attacks with her attack speed stim to stun an enemy. Uh, before it had to be three in a row and then we lowered it to two in a row. But if you... If I basic attack Barra, and then I basic attack uh-huh. a minion, and then I basic attack Barra, Barra wouldn't have gotten stunned. I needed to hit him two in a row. I couldn't hit any other targets. Now, I, if I did that again, it still wouldn't stun, because we've upped the requirement to three successful basic attacks again. <laughs> I'm going to take the over on over under two basic attacks needed to uh, to stun with Arachne 2. I'm going to say more than, uh, and thanks to prize picks, I'd be right. Um because we are going with the more natural, obvious intention of this ability, mm-hmm. the two stun was obviously very potent in its own right, and now that it's a little bit easier to guarantee no matter what, we felt like it was appropriate to bring back the uh, the three successful hits um, on Arachne. But it's kind of a nerf, but a an ease of use buff, and I think a, a logic buff. Like, logically, this is how this ability should have always worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I honestly didn't know that it didn't work like that. 
That just that is so crazy I, to me. I think I've just you team with Sprack. He never complained about that. He was an Arachne main. Uh, I don't think he ever played Arachne. Dang. And that was the that was the problem that right there. That explains a lot, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, that was the problem right there. Arachne. Okay. If you want you want to talk about winning ranked games, no meta, whatever, play this god. This god is crazy. Like, you can't lose a one v one in the in the mid yeah, to late game. Is, like, you just can't. That is my favorite jungle to play. I love and playing Arachne. The skill floor is just so high. Yeah. And you feel like the ganks are just so easy to perform. It doesn't really take like brain cells. Nope. Um, Murder. Yeah, I I don't think I've ever like ran into that, or maybe I knew it and I just like played around it subconsciously. Just a nat. This guy's a freaking natural, unbelievable. Just a natural, yeah. Well, here's a here's one for you, Barry. For one of your mains, uh, Shing Chen. He now, uh, in his passive, he now gains five plus one per level temporary maximum health per stack. Uh, so now the passive is not just HP five. He gains temporary health while his passive is up and stacked, uh, and he now inherently has uncapped HP five. uncapped hp5 what yep uncapped oh, i'm so back <laughs> as much hp5 <laughs> as you want as wait like above 100 that yep uncapped yeah, I'm so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, catch Barry slamming a Stone of Gaia Shing Chen immediately. Right? Stone of Gaia, actually good on him now. It yep. took eight years. For and him to and come back. one crazy balance change for one yeah. god to have Stone of Gaia be so back. Yeah, it's actually good on him now. Yeah. Unironically, sovereignty, Stone of Gaia Shing Chen coming to your assault cues. Woohoo. Uh, <laughs> Shiva, um, the first part of his AO3, his dash, Pillar of Dawn, the first part of this ability functions like a regular dash, allowing Shiva to slide along walls but no longer stop short. Uh, and he now gains the damage mitigation while dashing, in addition to when he is inside the pillar. Um, this has been a long requested change from a lot of Shiva players that not having it slide along the wall is really annoying. Um, so we were happy to be able to do it. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, I hate that character. No, okay. Fair enough. Uh, I've always disliked that character for some reason. I don't know why. Is it because he puts you on a trampoline? (laughs) I like trampolines. (laughs) I don't know, there's something about that god. It's just like, he doesn't feel good to die to, I think. Yeah. Like, you just feel like you can't get away, and he just gets on you, and you're just dead. Yeah, fair or, enough. Or he just doesn't do anything on your team. Like, he's just a sponge that's, like... He, he gives, like, a baby knock-up that's, like, 100 damage. You're, like, sick. Nice. Yep. That's cool. Uh, last but not least, it's Athena time. Um, no. Yep. Uh, her AO1, Preemptive Strike. Hitting an enemy no longer grants a block stack. Instead, granting a stack of 60% damage mitigation against the next instance of an enemy basic attack. So, slightly better than half a block stack. Uh, Reach also grants a damage mitigation stack when hitting an enemy god once per stack. So, your stacks are no longer nearly as good. They used to be full block stacks. Now they're 60% mitigation against a basic attack. But, you don't have to dash through an enemy uh, in order to get them. You just have to hit an enemy god with reach. So if you press three, reach them, that's a stack. If you taunt, reach them, that's a stack. You get way more stacks, they're just not as good. That's okay. That god's back. She never left. Uh, we did also oh, decrease no. the slow for on her three from 20% to 15%. Uh, okay. So, you know, a little nerf in there. Um, but that's... Uh, that's the Athena change, and that is the end of the the big list of changes um, in 11.3. I skipped, like, a bunch, Barry. A lot of them being, you know, timings changes on firing timings. Um, Poseidon and Cuckoo, their threes, both 
hit a little bit sooner now to better match the effects. There isn't that delay on like Poseidon Whirlpool oh, yeah, where it like, doesn't three, tick. Yeah. Um, cool. I think that will probably be OP. Um, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but a pretty crazy patch, no? Yeah. I would say just every knob was turned in, honestly, not a bad way. Um, I don't think anything sounds like genuinely will take over the meta. Um, especially if every god kind of got touched and buffed. Um, or like any any god that needed that quality of life change got changed. I, I think it's fine. I mean, if everyone's moving up, then I think for the individual player, it probably just feels better. I mm-hmm. think. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited to see what the... that agony change though. <laughs> I will not say anything so that I do not get in trouble. Uh, it's time for our random question of the week from our community Discord, patreoncom slash backliners, The place to go if you want to get involved there. Um, sea Fog asked, "What is the perfect pen? Ink color, tip size, grip type, cap or click, etc." Let me tell you one thing right now, Barry. If you come to me and say a cap pen is better than a click pen. I'm going <laughs> to... Okay, I just thought of like three <laughs> jokes and all of them were inappropriate. Um, I'm going to be sad. <laughs> that's, that's what... I'm going to be... I'm going to think oh, you're no. wrong. Cap pens are so much worse than click pens. Click pens are broken. I have a cap pen in my hand right now. I mean, obviously, like, yeah, everyone has a cap pen, like, around. You, I actually you don't. You can't get rid of them. Uh, um, oh, I do. See. But this is like more like a marker. Um, I would say it needs to be kind of light. I don't like heavy pins. Um, yeah. I don't know like what the actual weight needs to be for like acceptable. The yeah, it just needs to like I pick it up and it doesn't feel like it's like weighing itself against my hand. I just want to be able to maneuver it easily. Yep. Um, it needs to be a clicker. That's not annoying to click and not loud to click, but it feels satisfying to click. Mm-hmm. Um, and it needs to have, I can't, I don't know how to describe like the different tips of pins, um, but I don't like the pins where they're like, I, I don't know what, what this is, but they're like overly ready to write, you know, mm, where it's like, they roll you, too quickly. Yeah. Like if you, if you try to write, something else without like picking up your hand all the way it streaks in the same intensity yeah of like mark i guess i don't know how to describe it um yeah it needs to it needs to have those i'm not too picky but if i was just driving like the perfect pen i think it would be that and like obviously like black ink black ink is just superior to everything else yeah uh i'm realizing now that i should have asked my wife um because she is like obsessed with this type of thing, but oh, she is still awake. I really thought she wouldn't be because she had a long day of work today. She is typing. Um, because I am interested in her thoughts. Yeah, it's obviously a a click pen. She says flare pens. What are flare pens? Look it up. Flare pen. Uh, that can't be right. I think that's a cap. Yeah, that is a cap. Is she sure about this? Yeah. It, it's, it's late, you know. She's yeah, sleepy. she might be sleepy, guys. Like, <laughs> which is fine. I She sent me a picture. No, she sent me an Amazon thing. Or maybe this is Target. Yeah, this is Target. She said, I say, are you sure? And she goes, <laughs> of course I am, period. Oh, no. So she's, 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 she's serious. Flare pens are good to write with. Um, but I think that these, I think that these smear for me as a lefty, um, which is a big problem. Uh, I don't like that. Um, oh, that, yeah, that's a big thing too. They not smear easily. Yeah. Can't smear. Um, immediately when this question was asked in our community discord, um, odd otters, friend of the podcast said, Pilot G2 or I riot had the, had the model ready to go. Uh, and he said, that it's on his desk pen. and C fog who asked the question initially 
said, I mean same, and sent a picture of a bunch of Pilot G2s in a mug. I feel like it is Pilot G2. Here's the thing, though. There is some, there is something about, there is a brand of pen that I don't know that I think is only given to servers at nice restaurants. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is only there to test your will as a good human. Because you know that when you write, like when you sign the check or whatever, and you're like, oh man, this pen is so nice. Like, this writes so well, all that kind of stuff. And then you're like, I really want this pen. But I shouldn't use, like I shouldn't take it. Because it's theirs, number one. And number two, I'm sure they're probably paying for it. Because of America. And number three, it's just not the right thing to do. But it's so tempting because you I don't know how to find these pens. They're only given to servers at nice restaurants, oh. I swear. Okay, I found one tip. The precision point is not it. Not the precision uh, point. No, yeah. It's uh it's it, the pen with like the little tiny like tip basically and like the tip sticks out a bit and then it's got like a just a flat surface that writes with i do not like those guys i have bad news uh joe texted me you're so wrong period i'm filing for divorce um so Uh... you know we all knew this would happen eventually um bummer to have to find out on the podcast um but it is what it is um unlucky uh, all right. Next up, we have Young Shadow Faxed. Pi Day random question for question of the week. It is Pi Day. Happy Pi Day, Barry. Um, I'm so hungry. Me too. Uh, favorite type and least favorite type of pie. This one's really easy for me. Apple pie is better than every other mm-hmm. pie combined. It is not close. No other pie is worth my time. I know that's not a good take, but it is my take. Um, I am only, I am an apple pie one trick. I am literally an OTP for apple pie. I won't have anything else. Apple pie is really good. Um, it's undisputed. I don't think, is a cobbler a pie? Um. Okay, cobblers are good, and it isn't just apple cobblers that are the best. So that would make me walk back my, uh, my thing. Oh, wait. Dude, why doesn't Joe just host a show? She's so smart. She texts me savory pie, like pot pie and shepherd's pie. Those are both unbelievable things. I love those pies. They're so good. Uh, I would go with peach cobbler. Mm. Peach cobbler is really good, too. I like peach cobbler. Like, um, uh, and what's the what's Dutch apple pie where it's like the crumblies on top? Yeah, sign me up for those. Dude, I'm so hungry. Holy cow. Me, too. Um, I, I didn't realize how hungry I was until like we started talking about this and I am I could feel like my entire stomach lining. I know. We gotta we gotta hurry it up so we can get some food. Um and the and the hot debate at Shadow Facts office today is cheesecake pie or cake. I think it's its own identity, and I think that's fine. I think it's pie. I think it's obviously pie. I don't even understand don't the argument it... that it's cake. I don't think it needs to be something. It has I a crust, it's... and it's and it's in a it's in a sheet <laughs> pan, like it's in a circular pan. It's got a crust, just like a regular pie, and then a topping on top. Like, what are we talking about here? Yeah, it was misnamed in the beginning, and probably cheese pie doesn't sound as good. Um, so they went with like the double C's. Okay, neon cannot be serious. Part... The argument that it's cake is that it's che- called cheese cake. That is not a good argument. That's not good. And nothing else about it is cake. They just named it wrong. Bear is right. Yeah. Cheesecake sounds better than cheese pie, and cheese pie sounds like a pizza. Yeah. And I won't really accept pizza pie as, like, your favorite pie. Uh, I think that's ridiculous. Also, yeah, it's a completely different crust. Yeah. yeah. I, completely, I, I completely agree with your thought process here, but also it was just misnamed to birth, and sometimes we are, and that's fine. Yeah. No, it's ridiculous. There's no chance it's not happening. Uh now, Neon, I will answer your question, though, uh, even though you've unbelievably angered me. Uh, don't know if we've done this before, but if you could be any age for the rest of your life, what age would you be? You wouldn't be immortal, and you would still live a normal length life. You would just have the physical body of the age you pick. 
physical body. That's a tough one, actually. Because obviously, like, my high school physical body was probably when I was in the best shape. Or maybe, like, in college. I was too, I was too like, scrawny in high school. Um, but my mental health was so much worse during those times. Like, my mental health, I would say, like, my 30s is significantly better. But I do feel older now. Um, I need to, like, Wait. stretch and stuff, you know? Wait, so working out, you can't change your body at all? Um, I don't know if that's necessarily true. Uh, you just have the physical body of the age you pick. So I guess it would just be best to be, like, early 20s. Yeah, so you can just, like, work out and change and be... And not, like, moan when you get out of bed or, like, you lay in the... <laughs> Whoa, man. Lay in... <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what, what, what did I say? Oh, oh, more than or less than four moans for Barrow when he gets out of bed every day. <laughs> You know, sometimes you roll over and it's early in the morning and you're like, oh, yeah. You know, oh, just... yeah. I hit one of those. Dude, I stretched. And... I did the stretch where you like put your hands on the top of the door frame and like lean through it today. I kid you not. I think I cracked twice in each shoulder and like twice in my back. All did I did today was, the same? oh, I felt incredible afterwards. It okay, felt nice, so much good, better. Good. But like, I was like, man, my body is falling apart, like falling apart. Yeah, can I pick someone else's body? <laughs> no, yeah, it has to be your own. I think early twenties is the answer here. Um, yeah, but thirties, like, kinda, like late twenties, is also acceptable. I think anywhere in the twenties is acceptable. Thirties, you start slowing down and getting like random pains, or like your digestive system is just like, I don't want to agree with you today. Yes, you know, dude. Gonna... My oh man, yeah. If I'm thinking about my stomach, early twenties, I could, man, I could eat yeah, the most anything. disgusting yeah. things in the world i would literally eat a kfc double down and then go play basketball for two hours uh-huh. nothing like it was nothing it was fine no, no problem i could eat a whole large pizza and then like just go to bed happy and not in agony like uh-huh. what was wrong with me it sounds like everything was right with you. That's what I'm. Like, what's wrong with like me now, just... bro? I know what I'm, <laughs> I. I know the meal I'm gonna eat after this podcast, and I'm gonna be in pain afterwards. But it's what I'm craving, so like, what I'm just gonna do it. You know what I mean? That's all there is to it. Yeah, we got homemade pizza waiting for me, and I can Ooh. just keep smelling it, and I'm starving. All right, then I'm let's panicked. then let's close it out because Neon's question was the last one of this week. So big shout out to to the Patreon Discord. Big shout out to Prize Picks. Again, they'll match uh, up to one hundred dollars on your first deposit. Uh, prizebix.com and use code backliners big shout out to them um we'll be back next time we're back you know that's kind of the way we're doing these things these days so uh we'll see you next time until then barra you know what to do bye yes sir yes sir that was clean for me being this hungry that was really good A, a consummate professional Constant. I kind of felt a voice crack coming a little bit, so I had to cut it a little short, but, you know. And you know what? <laughs> None of us ever would have been any the wiser. Uh, I well, could feel it just deep in the throat. Okay. <laughs>